change out that evaporator coil that I threw some bird turd on what a couple weeks ago maybe three or four weeks ago no longer than that it was on 4th of July right wasn't it 4th of July weekend and uh, I think it's still holding charge the customer just got proactive and said yeah let's change that coil so today is a great day to do it I still got to build it out I like I don't buy the coils pre-built I like to build them out myself um, just, I don't know. I just enjoy it. I don't know why. And uh, I always use those digital thermostats, the A421 ABD O2C with defrost. And it seems like when you buy the built-out coils, they still put the old mechanical thermostats on there. So I just build them out myself. It's sitting back there in the box. I got spare parts. And, oh yeah, I got my Milwaukee tools on top of the box because I was doing some home home chores. And, you know, you got to use your home tools. Now I did build. Check this out. I did build this little portable power pack for like charging devices. Um, you know, you're out there running around and your your iPad goes dead, your phone goes dead. If if you're doing HVAC YouTube's, your GoPros go dead, or your DJI or your Insta360, whatever camera you're using. So I purchased this LiPo battery on Amazon in a little case and a bunch of little, I added some lights to it in case you get out there at nighttime or use it for camping. Um, and I built a little portable power, the NorCal PP1. Yeah, the PP1, portable power one from NorCal. And I'll, I'll show you guys that, and then uh, we'll head out to the, uh, to the job, and let's get this going. All right, this is it, the Portable Power 1. And they've got an on-off on switch. These are the light switches for the side here. Light 1. Light 2. We got quick charge USB-C. We got, I think these are 18 watt, uh, pardon me, quick charge USB-A. We got, I think these are 18 watt USB-Cs. I do got 65 watt USB-C, so you could charge your laptop, another quick charge. And then the 12 volt here for charging up all the different things and it's on this rad little carrying case you can carry it around and let's check out the guts it has a 20 amp hour lipo 4 battery i got room to put to carry more stuff in here because i do have a wall charger you can plug in and i also have a solar charger you could charge it up with a solar panel. Um, but when you're charging, the literature says to keep the charger furthest away from the battery as possible. So this is going to be killer for camping, road trips, in the work van. You can take it up on the roof with you and charge up your devices. It's a good little backup. And at nighttime, if you need a little light while you're goofing around... I put lights in it also. You could even hook up a small inverter on there with the alligator clips and run a small little 300 watt inverter. And that is the NorCal PP1 that I built. Portable Power One.
Let's get after it. Look at this box of goodies right here. Box of goodies. You actually get a piece of wood in there now. They never used to do that before. Now you get a little chunk of wood. I'm gonna save that. There it is. Look how they scaled down the suction line to five eighths. It used to be seven eight suction lines on those. Remember that? Isn't that crazy? All right, we're getting this thing going. Don't forget your nozzle. They come hanging in the coil. There's a sizing chart for it. If it's not an orifice, it's a nozzle. I've talked about this a million times on the channel. It is to help stop with what's called the slip. Off this distributor, we'll go over this real quick. You got these three you got your three inlets on your distributor feeding your coil. That nozzle is to supposedly try and help to get even flow to each one. Slip is if you overfeed one of these and you're starving the others. That's what the nozzle is for. It is not an orifice, it is not a metering device. It is a nozzle. Okay, so I just wanted to get that out there. It's important that they're in there. I, it'll work without them. And like I always say on my channel, I'm goofing around, but you guys do what you do. I'm going to do what I do. They're engineered to have it in there, so I like to use them. And they are different sizes. And there's a sizing chart you'll find in your coils. All right, I finished building out my coil. I'm going to show you guys my little... I got some wire loom off Amazon for cheap. Let me open up this door. I got to get two hands on here. Hold on. Do I need two hands? No, one hand will do it. Got the wire loom for my control wires coming out of my thermostat. Just to tidy it up a bit. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna put a chunk on here yet or not for my power coming in. Cause I got a, a box that goes on the back with a toggle switch. So we'll see, I'm still debating on that. switching this one over to 448A. It was running 404. I got to go up on the roof and recover the charge and replace the liquid line filter dryer. We got our TXV and our solenoid installed over there. This one's going to be two speed fans, California compliant. And let's jump in there. Okay, I'm recovering the charge out of this thing. I got my new dryer here. I gotta replace that liquid line filter dryer. But I'm recovering the charge because this was running on 404A. I'm switching it over to 448 because it just makes sense. With the price of 404 and what's coming down the pipe, it just makes sense. There's my coil. It just makes sense to switch it. Switch it over to 448. Um, and that's what we're going to do on this one. 